I, I want to, uh, I know we talked about, uh, we were talking about oil chemistry yesterday. I don't think I gave a good, expo- a good enough explanation on synthetic engine oil. Okay. So I want to just take a brief moment and, do, and talk about it again. Okay, synthetic synthetic engine oil is made in a laboratory compared to a crude oil that is extracted from the earth. Right, the so basic engine oil they get it from fossil. It's like a fossil fuel. They get it from like dead plants and uh, algae. Right, something that dies. It's a uh, it's a extracted actually from the earth. Unlike synthetic oil, right, it's made in a laboratory with special additives for the engine. Okay, uh, back in the day, it, it was said that uh, uh, crude oil is from from uh, dinosaur bones. That's actually a it's actually a myth, a uh, folk legend, uh, urban rumor. It's actually made from dead plants and uh, algae, stuff that's buried and died. I mean, things that that died. And, Synthetic oil is better for the engine compared to crude oil uh, the primary cause of the additives added to it. So on a synthetic oil, special additives is added to uh, the oil to help protect the seals longer and the metal longer. When did they start making synthetic oil? Like when they first started having cars, they would use regular oil, Yeah, right? yeah, regular crude oil, yeah. Synthetic oil, that's a good question. I, I don't know what's the... Okay. Early seventies, I, I actually don't know the exact date, but when yeah. they start making it, I'm thinking the seventies, eighties. Okay. I'm not, sorry, I don't know the exact date, but when they start made it, making it, it became very popular, especially race car drivers, because it helped protect the metal. Right. I'm have to look that up. That's a good question. I have to go look that up, research the synthetic engine oil. Uh, again, adding synthetic oil to a worn engine can cause cause leaks and noise. Now, here's a pr- I told you about this yesterday. You, they asked, can you switch from a from a basic oil to a synthetic oil, or from synthetic oil back to a basic oil? Yeah, synthetic oils were made to work with regular oil. You, you could actually fit one quart of synthetic oil in your car and three quarts of regular oil in your car. It won't hurt it. Here's the issue, though. We, a synthetic oil, you might see more leaks. I hear engine noise. Or you said, I got bad oil in my car. What's happening? The reason why is because synthetic oil is so fine that if the... You ever seen... Let me, let me back up for a second. You might have seen this. I've seen people come in to get a transmission service. Okay, that means change the oil and filter. And they haven't done it in a long time. And it gets really, really dirty. Okay, I mean, almost like mud. So you go change it, and they put the new transmission fluid in it. And it has all this clean. It has all this clean detergent in it. So, it, so, so the technician does the service, change the filter, the gasket, the oil. They go get in the car to drive it off the shop, and the car doesn't move. The transmission just went out. A customer will not believe that you didn't do nothing wrong to their car because they drove it into the shop. I, this had happened to me. The first time it happened, I panicked. I'm like, what, what you supposed to do? Then I learned, an older guy, older tech, an older mechanic told me, pick the fluid back. So I drained the fluid out, out the car. I actually drained the new fluid out the car. I took the old fluid and stuck it back in the car. It came in the class, it came in the shot with it. I put it back in the car. Let it run for 10 minutes and the transmission moved again. Anybody, anybody want to take a guess why, why would that happen? Uh, so wait, what, so what was the situation again? So they changed the oil, they changed the transmission fluid. It was all about the transmission fluid, right? So they changed the oil, the filter, and gasket as a maintenance. Cause like, the engine, like the engine oil is supposed to be changed, the transmission fluid is supposed to be changed every two years also. Okay. Okay. This hasn't been done, say, a decade, a long time. I'm probably exaggerating. 
So once it changed it, the transmission didn't want to move. Okay. <laughs> oh. That's for me when I edited all that out. I need to know when I cut it. <laughs> all right, so synthetic oil. Like I said earlier, adding synthetic oil to a worn engine can cause leaks and noise. Oh, I'm going back to the transmission. And the reason why that transmission I just told you about, all of a sudden when you change the fluid, it don't move. You put the old fluid back in, now it moves. And the reason why is because the bands, the metal, the material are so worn out that the dirt and grime from the old oil is actually holding it together like mud. It's packing in and holding everything together. Okay, so when you put the new fluid in there with the detergent in it, especially synthetic detergent, it washes everything away. So now you got the band slipping, you got excess of clearance with this lower pressure, and the car doesn't move. And then you say think of something that you did, no, lack of maintenance on their end, but a lot of people don't believe that. So we usually literally have to put the old fluid back into the car. Right? And so we get the transmission fixed. And that will work when you put it back again because all that mud and grain will literally hold it together. So going back to this on the engine oil, all right, when you put engine oil, I'm sorry, you put synthetic oil on the car that's worn out, it shows sometimes if it wasn't taken care of, I had just had too many miles on it, you might end up seeing more leaks or hearing noise because a synthetic oil is much finer than a standard oil. Like you have a, say 1030 standard oil, you had 1030 synthetic oil. It's the same thickness, but synthetic, the flow is going to be much better. The flow into parts going to be much better. All right, it flows much easier. And that's why it creeps right past rings or seals or the clearance of the metal to metal increases just because of that. But synthetic, Ask me, it's the best oil you can put in your car, especially a newer car. Uh, if, now, if the if the engine, oops, if the engine is already worn because of a lack of oil changes, the standard oil will absorb or trap the combustion gases and making the oil acidic. That's what, that's what oil does. That's why you change it. That's actually why you change the oil is because. You want to get rid of all that acid and chemicals that collect it. They're trapped in there. That's his job. Hold on one second. Hey, give me one second, you know. Sorry about that. My dog just threw up right next to me and I can't take the smell. I was going to tear it off the lead to pick it up, but the smell was just getting to me. You threw it. You threw up everything. All right. Okay, so it becomes a city. Yeah, it's like a. It's, it's like a. a 
You see that battery asset that's on the car? The white powder you see on top of a battery? You ever see that, Angel? You, you open your hood up? Yeah, yeah. That's acid. On the post. It's on the post, exactly. That's acid. That can actually eat up your clothes. Right? Huh. Right? Now, and the dirty oil, it don't come that bad, but it still to become acidic forming. And it would eat up the seals of the car. That's what de deteriorate the metal in the car. Right? That's why you're supposed to change the oil to get rid of it. Because standard oil is supposed to trap it and hold it. Right? And that's what and that's why you change your oil. That's why you uh a little off topic here. You ever heard alkaline water? I heard some of that, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you heard of that, right? Alka alkaline water is least acidic for your system. Right? That's why you say drink alkaline water mm -hmm. above seven. Because believe it or not, if that water gets close to a one, this one got gotten to this health thing a couple years now. Uh, if it gets close to a one, that's damn near close to a battery acid. Right? It was a pH level, I mean, right? So, it also eats up the seals in the middle of your engine. That's why you want to change it. So acidic is not good for your system, not good for your body, and not good for your engine. Uh, Since in this time, eat up away seals and metal parts of your car. That's why you change it to oil. Also making a seal brittle and, and a metal distorted and worn out. So when you put the so now when you put that synthetic oil in there, right? I should, all right? When you put that synthetic oil in there, it's gonna go right past those seals and leak, or uh, make noise because now it's so fine, it's moving right past it, unlike the standard oil it was doing. I almost compared to what I showed you about the transmission oil. Wow. Synthetic oil may have the same viscosity, which is a thickness at the conventional oil, but the flow rate is different. The flow rate the flow rate is much thinner or finer and slips right past any warm parts causing leaks on noise from the engine. So the synthetic oil flows much easier than the exactly. oil? Yes, yes it does. Yes it does, Eric. It may not be a good idea to use synthetic oil on old, worn engines. I should have an S on that. Engines. All right. But both oils are designed to work together. Like I said earlier, you can have, say you, your car takes four quarts of oil. You could put three, a standard oil, one synthetic. That wouldn't hurt the car. Because synthetic oil was made to work with standard oil. S synthetic oil was made in a laboratory. I mean, they can mix it, mix it, no? Yeah, you can mix it, yeah. I do it all the time. Oh, wow. Now, here's the so thing. Why would, you, why would you want to mix it like that? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. The reason I did it, because I, I had a, a one quart in the shelf, right? So I just bought three quarts. <laughs> or or uh, you don't want to be fully synthetic. Because at the store... You can buy fifty percent. I think that's a fifty percent. Fifty percent synthetic. Yeah, you can buy half synthetic oil, already made together already, right? In a bottle. So you might not want full synthetic. Maybe your engine. Maybe your engine's making noise with fully synthetic oil, but you want synthetic in your engine, right? So you might just mix it and try to see if it works. It won't hurt it. Cheap oil comes from the same refineries as the expensive oil, just like gasoline, right? They all come from the same refinery. It's just the additive they stick in. It. They don't have the same. They just don't have the same additive package. Another thing is, you just don't know what's in the bottle you're getting, because in the cheap oil, you might be getting valvoline, mobile, or tinsoil. You just don't know because it's unbranded. But they come from the same refineries. Now, hmm. I know somebody on YouTube got not they get sued for that statement. That's a story they said a long time ago that they said something on they said something like this on uh, YouTube 
And they got a letter from the company said, no, we get our oil from a special place. Our oil comes from a, a, a special refinery. We got a letter at my job one time. We used to tell a customer not to buy Arco gasoline, right? Next thing you know, we get a letter from Arco saying, hey, our gas is, you know, this and that. You keep saying that to customers, they're going to sue you. But I can always tell when the gas came, when somebody burned a car in and took out the spark plugs, I can then and tell it can't use Arco gasoline because the plugs look different. That was back in the day, though. I don't know if it's still the same, but back in the day it was like that. You didn't have all this crud on it from the additives. But anyway, most oils come from the same refineries. Right? They, the additive package is not the same, though. Wow. If the oil is, if the oil is SAE or API certified, it can be used on your engine. Now, these are the two companies that certified your oil. It's the site only of engineers. And American Petroleum Institute, right? Because fossil fuels petroleum. Uh, API, not uh, American Petroleum. Huh? Yeah, American Petroleum Institute. And SEA. Yeah, these hmm. two come to certify oils. They say they standard to work on most on the engine. They can work on the engine. Now, here's the thing. If this says S S A E or uh, API on a bottle at the ninety nine cent store. <laughs> you could use that on your car. Right? Really? Yeah, you could use it on your car. Just change the oil every three thousand miles. It won't last as long as the other oil. Cause this is that's a certified oil. See right here? That's a certified oil. You just know yeah, it's a okay. credit. Right? Just change it every three months or three thousand miles. The reason why, you know why my Honda has three hundred thousand miles on it? I changed it all like clockwork. Right? When I was younger and had nothing, you know, had the energy to do it. I changed it like clockwork. Right? As I got older and lazier, I stopped using synthetic because I didn't want to change it every three months. Now I change it every five months. Okay. But yeah, you could if it has that on there, why not? You just you know now it's not synthetic. So change it every three months. The advantage of synthetic oil. Excellent lubricant qualities. This is the one that most people get it for. Attaches well to the surfaces of the, that means the metal of your car. And remember, what the engine's supposed to do, uh, sorry, that's what the lubricant's supposed to do, do. Attach to the metal of the car, so when, it's going, so when it's moving, it doesn't overheat and wear itself out or lock. All right, that's why, the, that's why, uh, I think that's, I think that's why some race car, uh, people do high performance cars use synthetic. Almost, a constant viscosity at different temperatures doesn't break down as easy. Like the standard oil will break down easier than synthetic. From cold to hot, cold to hot. Synthetic oil is it's not 100 percent consistent, but it's higher than standard oil. And like I just told you, you don't have to do it every three months. You could do it every five thousand miles or five thousand or five months. Now, some people say you do every 10,000 miles. I wouldn't do that. That's pushing it, right? 5,000 mile, 5, miles, 5,000 miles should be good enough, right? You start going 10,000 miles. That's no, that's crazy. Even I see now the commercial say change the spark plug 100,000 miles. That's the craziest thing I ever heard. Now you go change and it won't come out. Now you get, now you get ahead. But anyway, that's some of the reason why you use synthetic oil because of, of this. Excellent, excellent lubricant for Terrell. Uh, attaches well to the soil. That's what you really want. Yes. And that way, they cost more. I mean, uh, synthetic, you know, you've got to pay a little bit more. Oh, yeah. You pay Not a, the yeah. you yeah. paying more you for it. <laughs> 5,000 miles, huh? Yeah. Hmm. You're paying more it for it. it. Yeah. Yeah. You don't change it. If you buy synthetic oil and change every three months, you're wasting your money. <laughs> you, you, you're wasting your money. It's made to last longer.
resistant to the high temperatures. Like you just said, and you know, it's expensive. All right? And the motor oil is made the motor oil is made from crude oil with additives, but standard motor oil is made with crude oil with additives. Synthetic oil is man-made and has the ability to lubricate the engine at a high temperature without breaking down as easy as standard motor oil. All right, so again, that was just a, I didn't like the way I answered it yesterday when I watched the video, so I made this PowerPoint just some synthetic oil to get a better understanding of it. Any questions on that? No. Well, okay, I understand that. All right, this is what we left off yesterday. Hey, uh, Sergio, this is for Terrell? That's Terrell, right? This is for him. Uh, okay. When using the correct oil, use the correct oil to protect your engine. Yes. And this picture... Tell me three things he see in this picture. He may or might not see in this picture, I should say. Yes, uh, I know that orientation is going to be this Friday, right? Snoopy just threw up again. Give him a bit of drill. There's a second thing to it. He's using his phone, so he's swiping to uh, to the uh, shared screen. Oh, okay. Huh? All right. Any more screen in your phone? We can't do it right now. We're going to take it by itself. All So he sees the oil draining and yes. he sees uh, the plug. And the plug. The oil plug. Exactly. Okay. Anything else? I give you a hint. The jack stand, the, the place where you put the jack. Okay, I wasn't thinking that, but that's good too. No, it's mine. We didn't mention that one yesterday, but yeah, somebody had, somebody had to jack up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> tell, them, tell them that uh, yesterday when we did this, everybody had a different answer. That's all we were doing. So he did really good. But what's pointing to us Hank. It's a say now. Now it says, which oil should you use? Always use the oil weight that's recommended, recommended by your vehicle's manufacturer or the owner's manual. Everybody know what the owner's, owner's manual is? Or where do you find the owner's manual? 
Oh, I got it right here. <laughs> Okay, the question is, what is the owner's manual and where is it located? And the second one, if the owner does not have an owner's manual, how would you find out which oil to use? Or the weight of the oil you should use? Anyone can answer this one. So, uh, Reginald said the, uh, the owner, owner's manual is on the glove compartment? Exactly. That's exactly right. How about this one, Angel? Okay, is the owner there does not have the owner manual have for you find for each one. Um Well you can do it by searching, you know, by online or the uh, you know, um, let me gonna put something off in there. Um, I see a lot of I'm sorry. I see a lot of cars who be on the top of the oil container, you know, exactly. where you put the oil. Yeah. The cup. Yeah. It's on the, it's on the oil cap. Yeah, like, uh, there oil is. Cap. Yeah. Online, like you just said. Like, when you say online, I mean like uh, autozone.com. They tell you which oil it takes. Uh, some type of repair manual. Exactly. Or even the manufacturer cars, you know, sometimes when you get in there, you know, they can tell you what kind yeah. and how much oil you can put in there. Exactly. But, the, but you're exactly right. The first place of the oil cat, I looked there first. All right? And guess what? When I wrote that, I wasn't even thinking about the oil cat until you just said it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. I would think about the owner's manual and online. But the oil cat, you're right. I didn't even think about the oil cat. So that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Davis, so Terrell said if um, if you don't see it on the oil cap, if it's um, if it's it's mute or something, how, how how can you check? Just check online or yeah, like you go online, like AutoZone.com or some type of repair manual. Okay. I showed you earlier a repair okay. manual that we use at the school at like shops. They will list the specifications also. Mm. Right? Remember that? It was like, it was, not, it was called, uh, it was all data. Uh, pro demand. Mm -hmm. Or, uh, and Mr. White, what's that one that the library has that you told me about? What was that again? What's that book at the library that they had, the free library? Oh, Children's? Uh, children, yeah, it's Children. That's what it was. Yeah. Children, oh, children, 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 yeah. For y'all... Okay. For, for y'all... the library card, you can, a, you can access the Chilton library uh, uh, at the public library. Yeah, for um, y'all... Like, that's why I just said, for y'all, this probably be your best choice, because you get a free library card. Alright. Uh, most people use this outside of the shop when you use something like that. A man, not maybe not the same name, but something referring to something similar to this one. But if you're at the school, you get a free library card to go and use a children manual. Hmm. Maybe we could share. Yeah, we could show that after the uh, after this. It says, "Which oil should you use?" Sometimes you have to break the rules, All right? There's nothing, God, what the name, come on, right? There's nothing written in stone. Right here it says, there is no one size, there is no one size fit all oil. Otherwise, there's not one oil that fits every car, okay? Ah, this didn't come out right at all. Choose the oil grade. What was that name? Choose the oil grade as for your motor, for your engine. I didn't even see that when I, when I printed this up right there. And, and sometimes it goes to how you drive your car, the best protection. Thank you. 
And what that means is, like my car, it's a, it takes 1030 motor oil, right? But since I got so many miles on it, I put 2050 in it. Or I might go to 1040. Sometimes you have to bend the rules a little. So now, Mr. Davis, if you if you were to have a fast car, would you be able to bend the rules when it comes to oils to, to in a fast car? I put or synthetic in it. Oh, synthetic? Yeah, I wanted to too thick of oil in it because it got to move faster. Oh, Mr. Davey, as a recommendation to put in, you know, like, I, I, I think you mentioned the last time, when there's a high millage, for example, any car could be over 75,000 miles, that's a good thing to buy it, or does Western your mind, how is that? No, they took care of it, right? They, they took care of it. Uh, it could be a good car. It all depends on how they took care of the car. Like the, mm. like, like the, uh, it's an elderly lady lives across the street from me. I wish I knew she was selling her car. Her car had 70,000 miles on it. It was in excellent condition. If I knew she was selling, I would have bought her from her. It all depends on how long they take care of your car. A car can go up to 150,000 miles or 200,000 miles if they take care of it. It all depends how that person took care of the car. All right? But, all right I would, if I was buying a car, right, I look at the oil, the oil, the condition of oil, the condition of transmission fluid. I take it out and smell it, see if it smells burnt, especially the transmission fluid. Mm. All right. I look at the oil. I take the oil cap off and look inside the valve cover and see if I see crud. All right. I drive. I was going to drive it. A car could have. A car could have. A, a car going to have 50, 75, 80,000 miles and still be good condition. A car could have 40,000 miles on it, 50,000 miles on it, be in bad condition. And it all depends how they took care of that car. And also remember this, and also remember this, when you buy a used car, most of the time you buy somebody else's problems. That's why, that's why they sell them. <laughs> <laughs> that's a rule of thumb. Then again, you might, you look for somebody who's selling their car, because maybe LD lady, or anybody I know who sees an LD person in the car, right? And they sell their car. They, they, they kill they so they get to that car to buy it from them. Because they know they took care of their car. Right? That's the lady right. crosses the street, she said, every time she go to the service station, the technician always tried to buy her car from them. Because it's so clean. Right? And that's why and that's why I talking about we talked about this earlier about shop etiquette. Alright, we if we got if we at the shop and you got into an elderly person's car and left it dirty the boss would be pissed off at you. I mean, anybody cars, but especially an elderly person car, because they're religious to bring their car in when something goes wrong. And they don't want not, they do not want to piss that person off. So I can't take my car to my steering wheel. I touched the steering wheel and had grease on it. I touched the door handle and had grease on it. Because they like taking care of their car, because they, that's what they, they depend on their car. Like everybody depends on their car, but they really depend on their car. If you can buy a car and they still have it, especially a newer car, see if they still got their maintenance records on it. Some people keep them, some people don't. But the best thing you can do is a visual inspection and drive the car. I hope for the best. Now, if you buy it, like, like people buy their cars from car car lots, I tell them all the time, this is the most important thing you can do. If you buy a used car from a car lot, especially a used car lot, Take it to an independent shop and have them do a full inspection. Now I say a triple A certified shop. Because if a triple A mess up, they get your they will pay you your money back because they didn't catch if something was wrong. I used to work at a triple A shop. They really respect their customers. Right? So I tell someone who buys a car, take it to a triple A certified shop or a good shop that you know and have them do a full inspection. From the small check to the maintenance, everything. The tires brakes, everything, and the frame. See what's in the accident before. If you don't run a VIN number for car facts for accidents, have an inspector for accidents. You'd be surprised if you throw cars back together. 
All of my fashion. So, so you recommend uh, Mr. Davis? I'm oh, sorry. Mr. Davis? So if it's a used car, that's what you recommend to have a full inspection, right? Have a full inspection. Because there's a good, it was a, not, and not by the person who sell it to you. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> If it was a if it was a good shop, they give a ten a ten day return policy. Hmm. So now, if let's say if you were to buy a used car, you don't hire an inspector, and it happens to be a lemon or uh, a car that's not in good conditions, are you able to to switch it for another car? From where? From a person, a private owner? From a used from a used uh, used lot? Oh, that's all depend on them. And, uh, and Angel, I just thought about something Sergio just, Sergio just said. My ex-sister-in-law, right, she bought a car, hybrid, a Ford hybrid, right? Mm -hmm. It looked clean, right? And I told her the hybrid she was buying was highly rated above the one I had. But I never seen it. And I, when she got it, she she, she came and picked my the, daughter. What kind of and hybrid I, was it? Huh? What kind of hybrid was it? Uh, it's a Ford. I forgot which one it was, but I know it's a Ford. Anyway, and look, and when she came, she finally got it. I seen it, and I didn't look at it, but it looked good. Did you believe a month later she called me? She was stuck at the gas station, right? And she didn't have a triple A, so I took my triple A car up to her, right? I said, yeah, I was surprised your new car broke down? From a lot. From a lot. It started knocking like there was no oil in that car. I could not. And she knew it was a ride knock. It sounded like somebody had a hammer in that car. Kids with hammers in that car. It was so bad. And she didn't even make the first payment yet. Oh, my God. Right? And that car had low miles on it. Wow. So I don't know what happened. I, I haven't talked to her since. But, man. Even I was like, she's so calm. And she's all, she all calm by Even I was upset. And I was in my car. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I said, if, if that's my advice to anybody. When they get a car from a car lot, have it inspected. Take it, have, spend, spend the money and have it inspected. But make sure there's a, a return policy. If you don't have it inspected, at least run a car fax on it to see what's in the accident. I run the VIN number yourself. All the manufacturers. I'm sorry. To the uh, one when I question this one. To run anything like that, you have to pay to the the place where you mentioned after. I mean, for the VIN number. If you run a VIN number on on a. If you run a VIN number there, you can see if that car had a problem past the small. It's the history of that car. How many times it passed the small? Is it always filling the small? If it's always filling the small check, something's wrong with that car. You could do that for free. This is free. Okay. Thank you. Right? But it, it's not as in-depth as Carfax would you have to pay for. It. Right? That one you have to pay for. It. And I don't think it's that expensive either. Like that one you have to pay for. It. Okay. There might be another one out there. You just got to do the research for it. That you can run it, to see, to see the history of it. I just don't know, know it off the top of my head. The main required used to be. I said it used to be three months or three thousand miles. Now you go to five thousand miles or something. All changes now. It's probably synthetic oil. Okay. All right. The positive on extended oil change intervals, it reduces the carbon blueprint. So you got to get rid of all that bad oil. All right. But on the other hand, and you should get rid of oil the proper way also. Just don't dump it on the street all in, your, all in the dirt. Take it back to the parts store. And they get rid of it for you. And most parts stores do it for free. Most of them. I can't say all of them, but most of them do it for free. Okay. 
On the other hand, many vehicle owners are forgetting to check their check the oil engine oil level between oil changes. Are beginning to change the oil. And you don't want that either because what happens that builds onto sludge and excessive excessive burn, varnish and sludge. The results of an, an engine in the room by excessive varnish are sludge and sludge. So like we said earlier about the synthetic oil of basic oil, conventional oil, just change on a regular basis. Like you learned already, it get rid it get rid of all the toxics inside of it. If you want to extend the life of your engine, perform a regular maintenance. That is so crucial. Right? How do you know how to do the regular maintenance? What maintenance to do, Mr. Davis? Well, if, you, if it's new, it's in your repair manual, right? If it's, if you, it, let's say if it's a car, like a, a used car and you just purchased off somebody, right? And you just are, regular person you should get the oil change right away and write it down somewhere like in your phone i write mine to my phone and every three thousand miles i change the oil or five thousand miles i change the oil some newer cars have a light that comes on that tells you it's time to change the oil all right now for the now with the oil change most places will inspect the car for you because they're going to gonna try to sell you something now they're going to take the brakes they're going to check your tire pressure. Again, Angel and Terrell, an oil change. Tire pressure. Or an oil change, tire pressure should be checked. The top fluids. I think we lost surgery, that's why I'm writing it down. The top fluid should be checked, okay? And like every other oil change that rotates the tire, you check your brakes. Most places, like, I don't know, not, maybe not a fast oil change place, but most shops, they recommend you change your, uh, uh, rotate your tires every other oil change. And at the same time, you can check your brakes. Now, hmm. if you had a chill, I already asked you a question also, that Chilton manual, you get from the library, it's in there, there's a maintenance section that tells you when things should be looked at and checked. I think Mr. White is going to show it to you after this after this lecture, because in there there's a section that says maintenance, uh, maintenance intervals, fifteen thousand, thirty thousand, forty five thousand, sixty thousand, and under that it tells you things you should check for, to make sure they still, make sure they're okay. Engine oil and filters. Engines will fail due to a low engine oil levels, dirty and lack of lubrication, right? Obviously, like we discussed earlier, it's wearing out the engine, okay? The lubricant is no longer lubricant anymore. The oil chain interval should be changed on a regular maintenance schedule. We talked about that already. Now, some manufacturers have a sensing element in their car that tells you when it's time to check the oil or change the oil. The oil level sensor obviously warrants the driver when the engine oil level is criti critically low. That's the light that comes on the dashboard. Now I think the generic rule is anything under, when the pressure drops under two PSI, the light should come on. I think that's the number. Don't, don't hold me to that though. But, but you cannot always rely on that light. The oil light, okay. Uh, it should check it even if the light doesn't come on a regular basis. Like, I don't know, 
you got an older car, maybe once a month you want to check the oil level. Uh, many, many auto manufacturers are installing all level warning systems as a standard equipment, yeah. but not equipped on every vehicle. Right? So, some BMWs or some European cars, they don't even have a dipstick. They just have a huh. light to tell you it's time to check the oil or change the oil while the oil is low. Which is kind of, to me, it's kind of weird. Consequently, it's always important for the technician to check the engine oil level whenever the vehicle is being serviced. All right? Let's say you let's say you're changing an air filter. Check your oil. See how it looks. Check the low level. Right? Uh, check your brake fluid. Check your power steering fluid. If the oil appears very dirty or the oil change interval has nearly expired. An oil change and scheduled service recommendations should be made. That means if, you, you, if I'm in a, if you bring your car to my shop, and I say I'm just changing your air filter or belts, and I know your oil is dirty, I'm gonna recommend for you to change your oil. I'm actually the last time you change it, and you should change it if it hasn't been changed. It has if it hasn't been changed. Let me get, and, now, and get some mind also. Somebody asked me this one time before. Every shop is going to try to sell you something. Okay. That's why you're there. Right? That's a good, that's good and bad. The bad part is some mechanics are crooked and you can't trust them, but you don't know who's who. The good part about it is if you got a hose that's about the bus and they don't tell you about it, you're on a freeway <laughs> and it bursts, now you're mad at the mechanic. <laughs> Uh, this is this the one sometimes, this is what I tell some people. I said, if you're in a shop, because we had a surge, we had a surge ride like this. He tried to force feed everything to everybody, especially elderly people. And we used to get mad. You, buy these tires or your car, your car is going to explode on the freeway. You need this right now, your car is going to explode. You get a guy like that, he's working on commission. Okay? In my opinion, if I'm doing a service, well, this is what I did. If I, I see a service need to be done, I write a laundry list of services. And I tell the customer, this you should do right now. This right here, you can wait maybe six months, a year, but get it done eventually. Right? You're helping the customer out. You're not trying to force feed them. And you're trying to tell them the services on their car. That's why you're there. Without trying to be a crook about it. That makes any sense. Now there will be some people try to force things down your throat. Then there will be people that will try to help you out and do it the right way. Uh, if the oil appears is clean but the level is low, it's important to know that the vehicle owner's brand preference of engine oil before adding the oil. Now most most won't know the brand of oil they use. Uh, are care, but if they need, if they want that specific brand, yeah, you, you should put it in there. If they don't know, tell them you need to top off the oil to the right level to help protect the engine. Uh, sensing levels. If the engine oil level is low, always inspect the engine. Inspect the engine. And the oil filter for leakage for other signs of oil consumption and make the appropriate service recommendations. That's what I said earlier. Make the right recommendations for the for the customer. All of it's your car, do the you know, do the right uh inspect it and do the correct repairs. This is gonna this is gonna be a last one that Mr. Mr. Bryce can show the library. 
If they're right, or I can't, I can't hear you. We don't hear you. Okay, uh, monitoring the oil life. I'm trying to t uh, get Sergio right now. Um, oh, okay. It's a second, actually, I, I don't. All right. To send the, the... Okay, monitoring the oil life. Monitor the data from the TCM, which is, TCM is power constrained module. It's a computer on the car. They use a calculated mileage that you drive, uh, the barrel pressure, the engine load, the turn when it's time to change the oil. All this is computerized from the computer on the car. Then it's a light on the dashboard that says it's time to change the oil. Wait, could you just repeat that? I'm sorry. We have Sergio back here. And uh, let's see, Sergio. Yeah, Sergio's back. Could you just repeat that for Terrell? Yeah. <clears throat> on, on, some, on some vehicles, usually the newer ones, they got a monitoring, they monitor the life of the oil. And this is done by the onboard computer, which is called the PCM. Power control module. And how they monitor the life of the oil, they take other parameters into consideration, such as the calculated engine load, how hard you drive your car, you know what that means. The mileage of the engine that you drove since the last time you changed the oil. Uh, the average operating temperature of the car that you drive. And other and other inputs to measure the, the oil life of that car. So when it when someone is recommended, or the piece of them thinks it's time to change the oil, they flick a light on the dashboard that says maintenance required. I think I show you. I think I showed this to you in my daughter's car. That every certain many miles, a light comes on. You got to change the oil. You pop the hood, you press a button inside the fuse box. I think. And on and on my Prius, like I said, it's the same not the same procedure, but it does the same thing. But it's it's, it's so hard to find. Sometimes I like yeah, I leave it on. Then my daughter drives my car, and she gets tired of looking at it, and she goes through the procedure, through my owner's manual, and turn it out. It's not unusual for the oil life monitors to extend the oil change intervals up to 10,000 miles. That's a pretty long time. That's, not, that's, like, that's like one oil change a year. I had, there had to be some special oil to pour this one on. I don't think I recommend anybody. My highest is 5,000. I don't think I'm going 10,000 miles. Well, Mr. Davis, like, what if you haven't driven the car a lot, but it's been like eight months, like a situation yeah. that we have right now where you're not driving a lot yeah. of miles, but a lot of time's going by. Do you still? Yeah, it, uh, what you, yeah, because they said it can lose some lubricating values also by sitting around, right? It says because the rule is is three months, three months are three thousand miles, five months are five thousand miles. So yeah, the months count also because sitting there can lose some lubricating factors also. But honestly, on my older cars, I go by the mileage. The newer car, I go months and miles. Cause yeah, I got two cars that sit around a lot. Uh, and they, they just sit around. I, th I think I think my truck. I changed the oil. I sat for a year. I think I changed it like over a year. I think I changed it twice. Cause it just sits there. Uh, but but in reality though, what you want to do? Uh, what you want to do? Uh, uh, Aaron, because everybody. If your car just sitting around, start it up at least twice a week, let it run, right? For at least t 10 minutes minimum, right? That's good for the seals and good for the engine, okay? Just sit there and let it run for 10 minutes. Sometimes, sometimes I wear my lawn, I let my car run. And, it's good, and also it's good for the battery. It's like you can have a, here's, here's a, uh, an example, all right? Uh, you could buy a brand new battery, stick it in your car, brand new. Let it sit there for a month. You're going to need another battery. 
That's a brand new battery, right? But now, when you take that same car and start it up once a week, twice a week, and let it run for 10, 15 minutes, you're fine. And you especially want to do that with the... Now, I say that for the uh, engine oil, it's for the battery and for the seals of the car. And you want the seal to get some lubricant on it. You don't want to get to sit there and get brittle. So if your car is sitting, start up twice a week for 10, 15 minutes. And again, that's good for the battery also. You don't want the battery dying also anyway. Now, if you, Mr. Davis, again, so once, if, if you just have your car idling and you don't, you don't uh, turn it off for, for a month or so, Will that kill? You said it will kill the battery and stuff. Definitely, and yeah. The oil? Yeah. But I won't kill the oil, but the oil start losing its lubricating factors. That's why I said they change the oil three months off three thousand miles, five months off five thousand miles. But it doesn't kill it as fast as like you know you may think. That's why even though my car sits, I go past five months before I change it. All right, but I start up at least once a once a week. And just start just for the seals of the engine, like the gaskets, the seals. You get some oil on it, get a lubricant, so it won't be hard and brittle. But well, what's that question? Uh, can a you question. Name a vehicle? Can you name a vehicle that has an oil monitoring system on it? In other words, do you have a, can you name a car that has a light that says time to change the oil. I think it's the last question of the day. Yeah, name a car? My Honda Civic has that. Yeah, right? Honda Civic has it, yeah. The, the, the GMs I just showed you earlier. Earlier this course, a couple of weeks ago, that has it in there. Mostly, mostly newer cars have it in it. Not every car, but most newer cars have a warning in it. Time to change the oil. All right. And again, that's just and you'd be surprised how fast time goes by. Cause I forget. That's why it's in my phone. All right. Like when the last time I changed the oil in this thing? Especially you got multiple cars. Like when the last time I did this? When the last time I did that? And before we go, you want to sh show them the show them or you didn't get it up? Um, yeah, hold on a second. Um, Terrell's asking if uh, Toyota has the vehicle, uh, the monitoring system, the oil monitoring system. I have a Toyota. You know what? My my 2014 doesn't. My 2017 does. It all depends on the year they start. They want to use it. And the and, car. Uh, and, the, and the car. My truck doesn't have it, but somebody's Camry 2014 may have it. It, mm -hmm. it all depends if that manufacturer chooses to use it in. Now, do they, do you guys have library cards, Reginald Angel? Yeah, I have. Okay. So, uh, I'm gonna stop so your library. Yeah, I'm gonna, so you have a library. What was that? I'm going to stop sharing so you can show. Okay, yeah, so the library card. 